G'day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about a tool that actually came out on the release of Adobe Camera Raw 13.0. Now I'm actually using version 13.2 now, but uh, this feature was released a little bit earlier. And it's what's called the color grading tool. You can see on the right hand side here with all of our drop down tabs, it's roughly in the middle uh, and color grading. Now, if we just drop that down, um, you can see that we've got three color wheels, uh, one that's titled Midtones, Shadows and Highlights. Uh, and we have a few tools up the top there, so we're just going to have a look at basically what they all do. Now, firstly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the terminology color grading is and where it comes from. So color grading traditionally was always used in film and basically what color grading uh, means is to give a film a particular look. Uh, and there's plenty of examples and information online about what that means to give a film its look, but um, it, it basically is the last sort of process of uh, uh, adjusting color and making a film have its particular characteristics in terms of color and density, contrast, all of those adjustments that are normally made. Now, color grading is different to color correction, and both terms can be used in this scenario where we're talking around images. Color correcting is just dealing with any issues that might exist. So you might have a number of different light sources. Uh, you might have a combination of natural light as well as uh, illuminated light from, uh, you know, fluorescent or tungsten or any number of uh, sources and color correcting basically means you're correcting the image for those various light sources to either to fix any issues that might exist within the image uh, exactly the same for footage so color correcting is fairly normal where you correct the footage for any issues that might exist based on light sources and then of course once you've color corrected you can do your color grading which is to give it a particular look now that's flowed over into images and it's, uh, it's terminology that's used quite a bit. Uh, you see it quite a bit online. Uh, and it's now made its way into Adobe Camera Raw as we can see here. So color grading, as I mentioned, is used to give your images a particular look. Now, let's just go through the tools at the very top there. So you can see, firstly, we have the three-way, which is what we're looking at now. So that basically means that we're able to look at those color wheels for our midtones, shadows, and highlights all at once. We also have the option, if we want to concentrate on just one of those, to select the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. And that basically means uh, the color wheel is a little bit bigger, and we can make slightly more precise movements with that color wheel. Uh, with a little bit more control or just as I said concentrate on either the highlights, midtones or shadows. We also have the last one here which is what's called global and that basically means that uh, any adjustments made with this particular color wheel will have an equal effect across all parts of the image whether it's the shadows, highlights or midtones. So that's a really handy one to keep in mind as well. So let's just go back to our three-way. Um, so we have the three color wheels there, midtones, shadows, and highlights. And you'll notice underneath is a little slider bar. And basically what that is, is almost like a brightness control for each of those three different areas. So a brightness control, left goes darker, right goes brighter, uh, and same with the highlights left goes darker, right goes brighter. So just a little brightness control which is available specifically for each of the midtone shadows and highlights. Of course with any adjustment in Adobe Camera Raw simply double clicking on that tool brings you back to the starting point and we are back to the beginning. Now down the bottom, blending and balance. This is probably better demonstrated if uh, once we've actually made some adjustments to the color wheels. But blending basically means um, uh, how intense the adjustments that we make with these color wheels, how intense those adjustments are and how they blend with the original RAW or in this case digital negative file. So it basically means that if you slide to the left you have less intensity and slide to the right you have a greater intensity again 
we can just double click on that one and bring it back to its starting point. Balance is simply balancing between the shadows and the highlights. So if we make a color adjustments in the shadows, we can make that adjustment up here across more of the image or less of the image. So again, those two, the blending and balance, will be better demonstrated once we actually make some color adjustments. Now I've chosen this image because it is quite contrasty. You can see there's some quite bright areas and there's some quite deep shadow areas as well because it's a good image to demonstrate this particular tool. And we're going to be concentrating on the shadows and highlights because that's what will give us the most obvious effects for this particular image. You may have an image though that has uh, mostly midtones. Uh, of course, you can experiment with uh, that type of image as well. Well, and you will see uh, changes and adjustments happening but for the sake of demonstration I wanted to use a high contrast image so that we can really see those effects taking place. Now what we're going to do firstly is make an adjustment to our shadows so what I'm going to do is just make the shadows a little bit cooler so I'm going to add in some blue and you can see all I need to do is click and drag that little circle in the middle and apply a little bit of blue color and you can see immediately it is making quite a strong effect in fact the blue is affecting the highlights as well and that's because we haven't actually made a highlight adjustment yet so it's the blue is obviously more intense in the shadow areas but it is bleeding across into the highlight areas now remember we have that little eye toggle up here next to the the uh, words color grading so we can turn that effect on and off and we can see our original image without adjustments applied all right, so what we're going to do with the highlights is we're going to apply some warmth uh, in the opposite direction to that coolness. So, excellent. You can see that that's giving us quite a bit of warmth in the highlights now. All right. Excellent. So you can see on those two color wheels, I've applied a little bit of warmth into the highlights, which that has definitely had an effect, and a little bit of coolness or blue into the shadows, which that has definitely had an effect. Now, some other tools that are available for use within these color wheels is using our shift control and alt key or for Mac users shift command and alt. So if I select shift you can see that on the highlights there's that little line that radiates from the center of the circle out to the outside and basically what that means is I can only go across that line now I can't travel around the color wheel okay all right so that shift just basically keeps me on that line from the center out to the color that we've selected, which in this case is quite a warm color. So I'm just gonna bring that out a little bit further. If I hit the command, sorry, the control or command key, you can see now there's a circle within the color wheel. And basically what that means is that we can now only move around with that level of intensity with the color. Now you could, you could compare that intensity to saturation. So the further out we go, the more intense or saturated that color becomes. So what, what you're basically doing is locking the level of saturation and you can work within what type of color you want to do. You can see I'm just spinning it around there, applying different colors to the highlights, going full circle. We'll go back to our warm tones and that allows us to maintain that level of, of uh, color intensity but choose exactly what part of the color wheel we would like to use. Now if we go over to the alt key what that basically does is is it slows down the amount of movement so it allows for more a more precise selection of the color. If I take that off you can see it moves quite quickly and with the alt key selected it does allow us to slowly move that around for more precise specific adjustments now that's really handy remembering of course that you can go into the individual color wheel so you have a bigger color wheel to work with more accuracy and by pressing the alt key again it just dampens down the speed of movements so that we can really refine our color selection with a little bit more care and attention all right, let's go back to the three-way. Now you've probably already noticed as well that there's little circles on the outside. Basically what they do is they just allow us to drag around to different colors the selection that we've made. So while maintaining that color intensity or that inner circle position relative to the distance to the outside, sorry, the inside and the outside of the color wheel itself. All right. 
So we've made a warm adjustment for the highlights. We've made a cool adjustment for the shadows. What we're going to do now is that we're going to just make some further adjustments because I'm a little bit pedantic. There we go. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do now is have a look at the blending and balance. So the blending, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of that intensity and how much it is um, blending with the original raw file. So to the left is going to reduce that intensity, as you can see. It's just going to decrease, and to the right, it's going to increase that intensity. Now, it's not a huge amount. You can see even at zero, there's still there's still quite a bit of adjustment that's been applied. In fact, if we look at our original file, you can see that. Whereas if we take it up to intensity, you can see that that color is a lot more intense. I'm just gonna double click on that. We're gonna go back to the starting point. With balance below it, as I mentioned, the balance is between the shadows and the highlights and the various colors that have been applied within those shadows and highlights. So in this example, blue's been applied to the shadows, uh, orange or a warmer tone is applied to the highlights. If we slide that slider to the right, you can see that that warmer color or the highlight color is now affecting more of the image. And if we go to the left, we can see that that shadow color is affecting more of the image as well. So that's a fantastic way to further refine whatever adjustments you've made between the midtones, shadows and highlights uh, to then really achieve the look that you're trying to achieve. Now, as with any color or editing adjustment that you make to your images, there's no hard and fast rules. This really is a part of the creative process in how you want to present your images once you've uh, captured them. And that process can sometimes take a little bit of time. I often will edit my images, just sit with them for a little bit of time, maybe a few days, maybe a week, and come back and, and reassess the changes that I've made. Sometimes the edits that I make are really quick and straightforward. So, uh, you know, depending on the image, the use, the output, and my intent, it can be a quick or a slow process. But certainly, the color grading tools uh, within Adobe Camera Raw is a great way to make further color adjustments to your image uh, and obviously have all of the benefits of a raw or digital negative workflow. Now also keeping in mind that you can still go through and make your normal color adjustments. You've still got all of the advantages and flexibility of raw. You can still apply any of those changes that you want uh, along the way. Increase in vibrance and saturation, decrease in vibrance and saturation. There's still a bunch of options available to you to continue editing that image. Keeping in mind that color grading is just one of those options. And it's certainly a good option to be able to give your images a particular look that may be a little bit different to what you would normally present. So keep it in mind. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. And I uh, hope you have a fantastic day experimenting with color grading in Adobe Camera Raw. This is version 13.2. Take care. Look forward to seeing you next time.